So this is going to be a very general overview of how to use NVIDIA Insight Graphics to rip stuff. I'd mainly use it for textures. Uh, it's not too well. It doesn't work too well with 3D models. Uh, I'll show you what the features are. So NVIDIA Insight Graphics is a graphics debugger. That means it's used by programmers of the game to debug the rendering process. Uh, NVIDIA Insight is not the only program. There is also RenderDoc and there's a graphics debugger from Intel. So to get started, download it from this link on the NVIDIA website. You'll need to create an account for it. Once it's installed, make sure you run it as admin, otherwise it won't work properly. Once you're on this screen, hit continue, find the executable file, enter any commands you need. When you got all that stuff, hit launch frame debugger. When this window pops up, it's kind of a gamble. You have to see which one works for you. Usually I just terminate Steam, but sometimes I need to keep it running for the game to work. And you'll know it's working if you see the UI in the top left. All right, so now that we're in game, let's find the object we want to rip. I'll just rip this trash can. And we're going to hit F11 to start the capture. So what this is going to do is it's going to capture all of the draw calls for a single frame. And now that it's done capturing, uh, we have these controls at the bottom. Um, main control is this scrubber. So since we captured an entire frame, I'm going through the objects that were rendered during this frame. Uh, by default, this kind of sucks. Uh, change the wireframe mode. OK, there we go. Now I can see what objects being drawn. There's the trash can. And let's get the body. Okay, so this is the draw call for the body of the trash can. Now if we go over to our other monitor. So now on our other monitor, I'm looking at the NVIDIA graphics UI again. It's changed a bit. Uh, there's a lot of windows here. We can ignore most of them. We're mostly interested in this API inspector window. So to look at the textures, we can go to the pixel shader section. And these are the textures that were bound to the graphics card during this draw call. Not everything here is going to be used for the object, but the stuff for the object will be here. So for the trash can, I'm just guessing it's these two and these two. Uh, there's a lot of other ones here, probably not too useful. So to export these textures, uh, just click on it. Hit the save icon on the top. Uh, you can save it as a PNG or DDS. Just always save it as a DDS because the PNG will lose data and you can convert DDS to something else at a later point. So you can go through each of them and save them. So that's how you can get textures. It's super helpful to find out what textures are used for specific objects and uh, you can quickly go back into the game and scrub through and find other objects and see what textures are bound. You can also look at geometry in this window. Uh, if you don't have the geometry tab, you can go up to frame debugger and add it right here. I already have it added. So this is the trash can object. You can see it looks pretty fine right now. Uh, to save it, click on the memory tab, hit the save icon here, and just save it. So that was all I had to show off for NVIDIA Insight. Like you saw, it's pretty useful for texture work both finding what textures go with what object and exporting textures if you need to. The rest of this video is going to be showing how to import the 3D export into Blender. It kind of works and it's also kind of complicated, but it's better than nothing. So if you want to see that, stick around till the end of the video. All right, so here's our model file. It's in the CSV format, which is pretty unusual for models. So we're going to need a specific add-on for Blender to import it. This is an add-on I wrote for Blender specifically for this, so I can import CSV files. Just download this PI file and then install it. Once it's installed, you'll get this option on the import menu for CSV files. Once we've found our model, don't import it just yet because we need to customize the settings on the right side here. So here's the model open in Excel so you can get an idea of what we're looking at. So it's pretty readable. It's just a CSV file, so we can open it in Excel. If we look at the column names, we see we have positions, texture coordinates, which are uh, UV maps, 
normals and colors. So looking at this, we'll have to skip over the normals because this is not a number and this is going to throw an error. So we'll just get positions, texture coordinates, and colors. So here's the import window for Blender and the model open at the same time. So we can uh, change the settings while we're looking at the model. So if we're looking at the import window, we see we can input uh, column numbers for positions, normals, uh, UV maps, and then RGB colors here, vertex colors. So we'll start with the positions. The positions that we need to import that we need to enter into the add-on are start at zero. So if we start counting at zero here, we'll get zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So we'll input that here. Uh, since we're skipping over normals, I'll just import the same column number so we don't get an error. We can always recalculate these in Blender, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, let's get the texture coordinates. So we left off at five, six, seven, and eight. Import that. And then the vertex colors, I'll add a RGB vertex color and an alpha. If we look at the column name, we can see it. Um, well, it's actually BGR alpha. So we'll have to change the ordering here. Uh, but the column numbers start at, we left off at 8, so 9, 10, 11, 12. So they start at 12. And looking at the column name, um, blue is 12. Um, green is 13. And R is 14. And then alpha is 15. Now, this is something you just have to be aware of. So the positions and the texture coordinates are decimal points. So the range is 0 to 1. That is what this add-on expects. Looking at these colors, they're not. Uh, you might not see it right now, but it's on a range of 0 to 255. So the game is just using bytes for storage instead of, I'd imagine, a float. So we need to get these numbers between the range of 0 and 1. Luckily, the add-on supports that. What we have to do is check this box, Show Normalize. So what this does is it will take the inputs and then divide it by this number. So it adds a normalize option for uh, everything here, I believe. But everything can stay at 1, so that means divide by 1. It doesn't do anything. But we need to change the vertex color RGB and alpha. I wrote this out on and I'm a bit confused right now. Uh, 255. I'm just entering it. And then that alpha. Okay, so now that will bring these numbers to the correct range. And let's hit import. All right, so here's our model. Looks like it imported pretty well, at least the positions did. Now let's check the UV map. All right, looks like it's pretty small, but it looks proper. It's not all over the place, so I, I'm guessing that's correct. And here's the color setup. So honestly, this doesn't look that correct, but uh, then again, I also don't know what these colors are used for. Maybe they're supposed to be interpreted some other way, but um, hard to say where it went wrong. But um, at least the positions work and the UV maps work. So that, like I said earlier, I wouldn't recommend using Insight for models, but it's uh, it'll get you most of the way there.